So does the mainstream media black out certain voices that they don't want? Progressive voices that they don't want on their networks? Well, the answer is unequivocally yes. You know, it's something we've been talking about here for quite a while, that if you're watching the mainstream media, you're not going to hear them talking about Medicare for all. You're not going to hear them, you know, talking about universal basic income. You're not going to talk about them deep diving the environment and environmental issues and fracking and oil jobs and all of that stuff, right? The stuff that's just going to get swept under the rug. It's not going to be focused on. They'd rather have cultural wars and talk about things that, uh, that really aren't affecting uh, Americans, but certainly drive ratings, right? That's how they do it. They're running. Gonna get swept under the rug. It's not gonna be focused on. They'd rather have cultural wars and talk about things that uh, that really aren't affecting uh, Americans, but certainly drive ratings, right? That's how they do it. They're run by eight billionaires, the different mainstream media companies from CNN to MSNBC to Fox, etc. So to cover these types of issues, you have to watch a show like this, you know. Uh, and thank you for supporting independent journalism when you watch this show. Oh, man, he's hungry. Well, we now know <coughs> that Where are you gonna eat? Who was a progressive candidate who ran for president on the Democratic ticket? He should have ran as a third party candidate. He ran as a person who wanted universal basic income. And he ran the <laughs> UBI, a popular term. Like, kind of started trending as a result of Andrew Yang calling for a consistent form of universal basic income for the American people. And this was even before the pandemic. Let them see so you before first. Before the pandemic hit, which they want to stretch out. Like Kamala Harris and Bernie Sanders calling for $2,000 a month in universal basic income until this pandemic ends. But he was in front of this. He was calling for Medicare for all. He was calling for um, programs to help the working class, working class people, and expand labor rights in this country. Right? And if, if he made it as far as he did, I would have voted for the guy. But he didn't. And one of the reasons he didn't make it as far as he could have is because the mainstream media gave him no voice. In fact, there was a blackout to keep him off the air, at least in one major network, in MSNBC. So how do we know this? We know this because a longtime veteran producer at MSNBC has now come forward. And after enduring an interview with Andrew Yang on, on his show, talking about the state of the media, she went home and reviewed her journal. Because she was sort of pressed on this question. She went home and like looked through the dates in her journal. She went and started reading all through May 2019 and started to see. And she wrote in her journal a number of things about the network that she was disgusted with. That they told her, basically, she's not allowed to book anyone named Andrew Yang on the show. There was a list of names that were kept off the air. <clears throat> and it was interesting because I'm going to go through like a timeline. You can see this actually playing out right before our eyes. A number of examples of media bias on this. And you know, to their credit, a number of different reporters had, uh, in, in sort of non-mainstream media had covered this story and brought light to this story over the years. One of them is Scott Santons. He, he actually the story over the years. One of them is Scott Santons. He, he actually cataloged this and wrote a piece on this about nine months ago. And here is the piece that I was struggling to bring up for so long. But here is the uh, here is the article, the piece that he wrote. Just like bringing out so most of the ones that I know for sure is gonna uh, grab the food. And look, he updated this back in February. <sighs> so look at when MSNBC published These this. guys really the eat on the every week. In September. Notice whose name is missing. Andrew Yang, who was also there. Why is his name missing? By the way. And Andrew Yang don't have the was doing better than Cory Booker. Was doing better than most of the, like, uh, many of these candidates. Was doing way better than Kamala Harris. Kamala Harris had to drop out. So he catalogs all of these different screenshots. Who will be? I know this is a little hard to see. Oh, we got like, like two minutes left. Trying to side. get some yeah. more snakes. Who will be the uh, she's a sometime. Well, at least feeding her from the hand. Show you all the time in the cage. Let's see what happens. She really takes the mouse a little faster than the chick. Yep, there she goes.
Yang had been, was doing better than Cory Booker. Was doing better than most of the like, uh, many Another sometime. Was doing way better than Kamala Harris. At least, like Kamala I said, when I feed her so from the hands. But still uh, grabbing no problem in the cage. Let's see what happens again. Storage about to be full. I try to squeeze one more. Uh, coming in higher in and this is so. I mean, just take a look at your screen here. I mean, this is another example. You're absolutely right about that. I mean, they, uh, this is amazing, right? So I'm here's an interesting one where she. Is, so he is at two percent at the time. Andrew uh, Andrew Yang at the time was polling at two percent. Oh, okay. You might say, well, maybe they just didn't put the people that had two percent on the screen. No. Why is Tulsi Gabbard on the screen? Why is Cory Booker on the screen? Where's Andrew Yang, who's also polling at 2% at the exact same time? 